First, Lisa Marie Presley, the daughter of Elvis and Priscilla Presley, has tragically died at the age of 54. Yesterday morning, she was rushed to the hospital for a possible cardiac arrest. When paramedics arrived, they began CPR, and when they noticed that Lisa Marie was showing signs of life, she was quickly taken to a local hospital for immediate medical care. Her death was confirmed by her mother just a few hours after her daughter was rushed to the LA hospital. She said, It's with a heavy heart that I must share the devastating news that my beautiful daughter, Lisa Marie, has left us. She was the most passionate, strong, and loving woman I have ever known. Lisa Marie was born in Memphis, Tennessee on February the 1st in 1968, which is exactly nine months after Elvis and Priscilla's wedding. Her birth was international news because she was the couple's first and only child. As she grew up, it became obvious that she shared a lot of her father's charisma and talent, and she ended up following in his footsteps by releasing her own rock albums in the 2000s. Voice was also added to several of Elvis's songs like In the Ghetto and Don't Cry daddy. Lisa Marie lived with her mother in California after her parents split up in 1973. She recalled early memories of her dad during her visits to Graceland, riding golf carts through the neighborhood and seeing his daily entrances down the stairs. She said, he'd always wake me up to sing in the middle of the night, get on the table and sing. I remember him as my dad, but he was a very exciting dad. Elvis Presley died in August 1977 when he was 42 years old and Lisa Marie was only nine. She was staying at Graceland at the time and would recall him kissing her goodnight just hours before he would collapse on the floor and never recover. The next time she saw him was the following day, and she found him lying face down in the bathroom. She said, I just had a feeling he wasn't doing well. All I know is I had that feeling and it happened. But sadly, Lisa Marie would later make headlines of her own, particularly for her struggles with addiction and some very public marriages. She was actually married four times, and her ex-husbands included Michael Jackson and Nicolas Cage. In October of 1988, Lisa Marie married Chicago-based musician Danny Keogh, with whom she welcomed two children, a daughter Riley in 1989 and a son Benjamin in 1992. After five and a half years of marriage, the couple divorced in May of 1994. Less than a month later, she married none other than Michael Jackson. The two of them actually met at one of her father's Vegas concerts when she was seven years old, and Michael was still a member of the Jackson Five. They seemed to be very in love at the time of their marriage, but only two years later, they ended their relationship. In 2000, and Lisa Marie got engaged to a Hawaiian born musician, although that relationship ended when she met Nicolas Cage at a birthday party that very same year. Two years later, they got married during a secret ceremony in Hawaii on the 25th anniversary of Elvis's death. But less than four months after their wedding, the newlyweds announced that they were splitting up, and Lisa Marie admitted that they shouldn't have gotten married in the first place. Her fourth marriage came in 2006 to Michael Lockwood, and two years later, they welcomed twin daughters Harper and Finley. The singer then filed for divorce in June of 2016 and ever since their separation, the former couple have been embroiled in an ongoing custody battle over their children. Apart from her music career, Lisa Marie was also a dedicated philanthropist as she oversaw the Elvis Presley Charitable Foundation which benefits homeless families and offers rent free housing. She also worked with Oprah Winfrey's Angel Network to provide relief to those affected by Hurricane Katrina and the Dream Factory to benefit children with life threatening illnesses or disabilities. News of her tragic passing is certainly overwhelming but it's good to see that many of her friends and fellow celebrities have paid tribute in the best way possible. And now we're going to get into the heartbreaking way that Austin Butler paid tribute to Lisa Marie Presley. The Elvis star looked somber while attending the 2023 Critics' Choice Awards just three days after her untimely death. For some context, Austin portrayed Lisa Marie's late father, Elvis Presley, in the 2022 Baz Luhrmann film Elvis. He walked the red carpet on Sunday night with a downcast expression, despite the fact that he was nominated for Best Actor. He was dressed in all black and posed for photos with fellow cast members, who also looked pretty gloomy. Austin released a statement saying that he was heartbroken over Lisa Marie's sudden death. He said, My heart is completely shattered for Riley, Finley, Harper, and Priscilla at the tragic and unexpected loss of Lisa Marie. I am eternally grateful for the time I was lucky enough to be near her bright light and will forever cherish the quiet moments that we shared. Her warmth, her love, and her authenticity will always be remembered. Sad thing is that only two days before her death, Lisa Marie attended the 2023 Golden Globe Awards alongside Austin and watched him take home the award for Best Actor in a Motion Picture. While she appeared to be in good spirits at the ceremony, fans later noticed that she did look unsteady on the red carpet. During his acceptance speech, Austin thanked her and her mother Priscilla for being 
being by his side throughout his Elvis journey, which brought both women to tears. He said, I want to thank our incredible producers and Warner Brothers and the Presley family. Thank you guys. Thank you for opening your hearts, your memories, your home to me. Lisa Marie, Priscilla, I love you forever. 31 year old actor formed a strong connection with both of them ever since the production started on the biopic. For her part, Lisa Marie also had very good things to say about Austin and his portrayal of her father. She said, it's almost as if he channeled him, put everything he had, his heart, his soul, everything he had into researching, reading, watching, learning, honored him in every way possible. She also said that his performance was done accurately and respectfully and said, if he doesn't get an Oscar for this, I will eat my own foot. Director Baz Luhrmann also shared his own tribute to Lisa Marie, saying her sudden shocking loss devastated people all around the world. Lisa Marie, we will miss your warmth, your smile, your love. Not only that, but Tom Hanks and his wife, Rita Wilson, added in, we are heartbroken over the loss of Lisa Marie Presley, absolutely broken. Last week on the 12th of January, Lisa Marie was rushed to hospital for a possible cardiac arrest. When paramedics arrived, they began CPR. And when they noticed that she was showing signs of life, they quickly took her to a local hospital for immediate medical care. Later, her death was confirmed by her mother just a few hours after her daughter was rushed to the hospital. She said, it's with a heavy heart that I must share the devastating news that my beautiful daughter, Lisa Marie, has left us. She was the most passionate, strong, and loving woman I have ever known. Lisa Marie was born in Memphis, Tennessee on February the 1st in 1968, which was exactly nine months after Elvis and Priscilla's wedding. Her birth was international news because she was the couple's first and only child. As she grew up, it became obvious that she shared a lot of her father's charisma and talent, and she ended up following in his footsteps by releasing her own rock albums in the 2000s. Voice was also added to several of Elvis's songs like In the Ghetto and Don't Cry Daddy. Apart from her music career, Lisa Marie was also a dedicated philanthropist, and she oversaw the Elvis Presley Charitable Foundation, which benefits homeless families and offers rent-free housing. She also worked with Oprah Winfrey's Angel Network to provide relief to those affected by Hurricane Katrina and the Dream Factory to benefit children with life-threatening illnesses or disabilities. News of her tragic passing is certainly still overwhelming, but it's good to see that many of her friends have now come forward to pay their tributes. Number 10, Austin Butler. The Elvis star looked somber while attending the 2023 Critics' Choice Awards just three days after her untimely death. Austin portrayed Lisa Marie's late father, Elvis Presley, in the 2022 Baz Luhrmann film, Elvis. The actor released a statement saying that he was heartbroken over her sudden death. He said, my heart is completely shattered for Riley, Finley, Harper, and Priscilla at the tragic and unexpected loss of Lisa Marie. I am eternally grateful for the time I was lucky enough to be near her bright light and will forever cherish the quiet moments that we shared. Her warmth, her love, her authenticity will always be remembered. During his acceptance speech, Austin thanked her and her mother Priscilla for being by his side throughout the Elvis journey, which brought both women to tears. He said, I want to thank our incredible producers and Warner Brothers and the Presley family. Thank you guys. Thank you for opening your hearts, your memories, your home to me. Lisa Marie, Priscilla, I love you forever. The 31-year-old actor formed a strong connection with both of them ever since production started on the biopic. For her part, Lisa Marie also had good things to say about Austin and his portrayal of her father. Number 9, Baz Luhrmann. The Elvis director shared his own tribute to Lisa Marie and wrote, Her sudden, shocking loss has devastated people all around the world. Lisa Marie, we will miss your warmth, your smile, your love. Luhrmann took to Instagram to praise her and shared a photo of her together with Austin. In the caption, he wrote, Over the last year, the entire Elvis movie family and I have felt the privilege of Lisa Marie's kind embrace. I know her fans everywhere join me in sharing prayers of love and support with her mother Priscilla and her wonderful daughters Riley, Finley, and Harper. Last week on the 12th of January, Lisa Marie was rushed to the hospital for a possible cardiac arrest. When paramedics arrived, they immediately began CPR. And when they noticed that she was showing signs of life, they quickly took her to a local hospital for immediate care. Her death was confirmed by her mother though just a few hours after her daughter was rushed to hospital. She said, it is with a heavy heart that I must share the devastating news that my beautiful daughter Lisa Marie has left us. She was the most passionate, strong, and loving woman I have ever known. Number eight, Tom Hanks. The actor and his wife, Rita Wilson, each wrote their own tribute to Lisa Marie. Tom said, we are heartbroken over the loss of Lisa Marie Presley, absolutely broken. To give you some context, Tom Hanks portrayed Colonel Tom Parker, Elvis's former manager in the 2022 biopic. Rita went into even more depth and added, Tom and I had spent some time with the family during the Elvis movie promotional tour. 
Utah. Lisa Marie was so honest and direct, vulnerable, in a state of anticipation about the movie. She spoke so eloquently about her father, what the movie meant to her, and that it was a celebration of her dad. She went on to say that Lisa Marie has her gorgeous daughters, Finley and Harper with her, who made everyone laugh. She also opened up her home to them at Graceland and made them both feel welcome. Quote, she was so gracious to us, Austin, Baz, and guests. If you haven't heard her music, please go and listen. She had a sultry voice, a power, and tenderness that I have always loved. Tom and Rita also sent condolences to Lisa Marie's family and said, a mother should never have to lose a child. Lisa Marie lost her precious son, Benjamin. Priscilla loses her only daughter. It's too much. Number seven, Pink. Upon hearing news about Lisa Marie's passing, the singer wrote a heartfelt tribute on Instagram. She wrote, oh, this one hurts my heart. Lisa Marie, you were one of a kind. Funny, smart, sensitive, talented, witty, mean, loving, generous, judgmental, but always right, loyal, and you adored your children. She went on to say, my heart breaks for you and your beautiful family and your children. The world lost a rare gem today. May your soul rest in peace, friend. Even Warner Brothers Pictures, the studio that distributed Elvis, released their own statement on her death. They said, we are deeply saddened by the passing of Lisa Marie Presley and send our condolences and sympathy to her children, family, and the people around the world who love her. She was an invaluable partner and a truly lovely person whom we will remember as a devoted mother, beloved daughter, and loving friend. Billy Corgan also added his own tribute and said, there is heartbreak and then there is sorrow. This would be sorrow and on more levels than I can count. I truly cannot find the words to express how sad this truly is. Number six, David Foster. Days after Lisa Marie passed, the 73-year-old musician reflected on what it was like working with her. He spoke to People magazine and said, I clearly remember the day we were in the studio together doing a duet with her father, Don't Cry Daddy, which was kind of profound in its own way that she would be singing a duet with her father. She was just a hard worker and infectious and fun and irreverent. Foster also said that he really liked her music and thought it was cool. He went on to say, I don't know how to make that kind of music, but she loved that music and she made us love it too. So I appreciate her as an artist. The singer also reflected on what it must have been like for her to grow up in the family that she did. He said, it's a hell of a burden to carry around to be Elvis's daughter. And I think she wore it really well. I mean, obviously the struggles that she had are well documented, but who knows what it was like to walk in her shoes. She was iconic in her own right. Interestingly enough, Foster actually married Elvis's ex, Linda Thompson, who dated the King from 1972 to 1976. Number five, Billy Idol. The singer tweeted, sad news to hear of Lisa Marie Presley's passing. She was very loving to me in Memphis in the 90s. She gave me a viewing of the private sections of Graceland, which was very special. She was very lovely and we performed together in the early 2000s. Rest in peace. Billy Idol and Lisa Marie performed the song White Wedding during the Fashion Rocks concert on September the 8th in 2005. It was well known that Lisa Marie developed her father's talents in music. As she grew up, she ended up following in his footsteps by releasing her own rock albums in the 2000s. Her voice was also added to several of her father's songs like In the Ghetto and Don't Cry Daddy. She was married briefly to Michael Jackson and even appeared in one of his music videos. In 2003, she released her debut album called To Whom It May Concern, which ended up hitting number five on the Billboard chart and was certified gold. She then released her second album, Now What, in 2005, which reached number nine on the Billboard chart, and her third album, Storm and Grace, which dropped in 2012. Number four, Tony Orlando. The American singer tweeted, I have no words, only a broken heart. Heart. Rest in peace, beautiful Lisa Marie Presley. Please let us all pray for Priscilla. She's been through so much. An incredibly beautiful person who has been through oh so much. God bless her and her family. I believe in the power of praying hands. Tony Orlando was born and raised in New York, then New Jersey. In the late 50s, he formed his first group called The Five Gents. He recorded hit singles in the early 60s and became a record company executive in the latter half of that decade. In the 70s, he recorded more hits, including his best known songs, Knock Three Times and Tie a Yellow Ribbon Around the Old Oak Tree. In a 2016 interview, he was asked about his experience meeting Elvis. And he said, as a matter of fact, I got a letter from Elvis. I think I was 16. The letter said, I just want you to know, I put halfway to paradise in my jukebox. Orlando went on to say, when I finally met him in the 70s, I was headlining the same hotel that he headlined in, the Hilton in Las Vegas. I sat with him in his dressing room. At this point, Orlando then asked Elvis if he remembered writing a letter to him, quote, and he calls Priscilla, who remains a 
good friend entered the room and he said, tell Tony what my favorite song is. And sure enough, it was Halfway to Paradise. Number three, Bette Midler. The legendary actress tweeted, dear God, Lisa Marie Presley has died. I'm in shock. So beautiful and only 54 years old. I can't actually comprehend. She was joined by John Travolta, who also posted a beautiful tribute to the singer on Instagram, saying, Lisa, baby girl, I'm so sorry. I'll miss you, but I know that I'll see you again. My love and my heart goes out to Riley, Priscilla, Harper, and Finley. Actress Octavia Spencer also added in her own thoughts and tweeted, so sad that we've lost another bright star in Lisa Marie Presley. My condolences to her loved ones and multitude of fans. Only two days before her death, Lisa Marie Presley attended the 2023 Golden Globe Awards alongside Austin Butler and watched him take home the award for best actor in a motion picture. While she appeared to be in good spirits at the ceremony, fans later noticed that she did look unsteady on the red carpet, but she only had good things to say about his performance. She said, it's almost as if he channeled him. He put everything he had, his heart, his soul, everything he had into researching, reading, watching, learning. He honored him in every way possible. She also said that his performance was done accurately and respectfully and said, if he doesn't get an Oscar for this, I will eat my own foot. So she was clearly very happy with Austin's performance. Number two, Nicolas Cage. The actor put out his own tribute to honor his ex-wife, Lisa Marie. In a statement to The Hollywood Reporter, he said that she had the greatest laugh of anyone he's ever met. Quote, she lit up a room and I am heartbroken. I find some solace in believing she is reunited with her son, Benjamin. Lisa Marie was married four times with her ex-husbands, including Michael Jackson and of course, Nicolas Cage. In October of 1988, Lisa Marie married Chicago-based musician, Danny Keogh, with whom she welcomed two children, a daughter, Riley, in 1989 and a son, Benjamin, in 1992. After five and a half years of marriage, the couple divorced in May of 1994. Less than one month later, Lisa Marie married none other than Michael Jackson. The two of them actually met at one of her father's Las Vegas concerts when she was seven years old and Michael was still a member of the Jackson Five. They seemed to be very in love at the time of their marriage, but only two years later, they ended their relationship. In 2000, Lisa Marie met Nicolas Cage at a birthday party and two years later, they got married during a secret ceremony in Hawaii, which was also on the 25th anniversary of Elvis's death. But less than four months after the wedding, the newlyweds announced that they were splitting up and the singer admitted that they should not have been married in the first place. Her fourth and final marriage came in 2006 to Michael Lockwood. And two years later, they welcomed twin daughters, Harper and Finley. And coming in at number one, Sean Ono Lennon. The son of John Lennon and Yoko Ono tweeted a heartfelt tribute to Lisa Marie when he heard about her untimely passing. Sean wrote, got home late from seeing a show to hear the tragic news about Lisa Marie Presley. I had only met her a few times briefly, but I have to admit I felt a kinship with her. Not many people know what it's like. I know she was a special person. My heart aches for Priscilla. On January the 23rd in 1986, John Lennon's two sons, Julian and Sean, took part in the first annual Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony. On behalf of their father, they helped induct Elvis Presley into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, along with Jack Soden and George Klein. Julian was 22 at the time and dressed in all black, while Sean was 10 years old and dressed in a white tuxedo, wearing a rhinestone Elvis pin that his father used to wear. John Lennon's admiration for the king of rock and roll is now common knowledge among his music fans. Lennon said that his love for rock and roll was inspired first and foremost by Elvis Presley. He credits this as motivation to form his first band, which eventually became the Beatles. And he said that this was the result of wanting to be just like Elvis. Next up, details of Lisa Marie Presley's funeral have been released. The late singer has been buried in Graceland next to her son, Benjamin Keogh, ahead of her public memorial service. Her father, Elvis Presley, and his parents, Vernon and Gladys, are also buried at that Tennessee location. Her eldest daughter, Riley Keough, has now broken her silence after her mother's passing at the age of 54. The actress posted a throwback photo from her childhood and simply added a red heart emoji in the caption on her Instagram upload. Last week, on the 12th of January, Lisa Marie Presley was rushed to the hospital for a possible cardiac arrest. When paramedics arrived, they began CPR, and when they noticed that she was showing some signs of life, she was quickly taken to a local hospital for immediate medical care. Her death was then confirmed by her mother just a few hours after she was rushed to hospital. She said, it is with a heavy heart that I must share the devastating news that my beautiful daughter, Lisa Marie, has left us. 
She was the most passionate, strong and loving woman I have ever known. Austin Butler, the star of the latest Elvis biopic, looked somber while attending the 2023 Critics' Choice Awards, just three days after her untimely death. The actor portrayed Lisa Marie's late father, Elvis Presley, in the 2022 Baz Luhrmann film, Elvis. Austin released a statement saying that he was heartbroken over her sudden death. He said, my heart is completely shattered for Riley, Finley, Harper, and Priscilla at the tragic and unexpected loss of Lisa Marie. I am eternally grateful for the time I was lucky enough to be near her bright light and will forever cherish the quiet moments that we shared. Her warmth, her love, and her authenticity will always be remembered. During his acceptance speech, Austin thanked her and her mother Priscilla for being by his side throughout his Elvis journey, which brought both women to tears. He said, I want to thank our incredible producers and Warner Brothers and the Presley family. Thank you for opening up your hearts, your memories, your home to me. Lisa Marie, Priscilla, I love you forever. 31-year-old actor formed a strong connection with both of them ever since the production started on the biopic. For her part, Lisa Marie also had good things to say about Austin and his betrayal of her father. Recently, Tom Hanks and his wife, Rita Wilson, each wrote their own tribute to Lisa Marie. Tom said, we are heartbroken over the loss of Lisa Marie Presley, absolutely broken. To give you some context, Tom played Colonel Tom Parker, Elvis's former manager in the 2022 biopic. Rita went into a bit more depth and added, Tom and I spent some time with the family during the Elvis movie promotional tour. Lisa Marie was so honest and direct, vulnerable, in a state of anticipation about the movie. She spoke so eloquently about her father, what the movie meant to her, that it was a celebration of her dad. She went on to say that Lisa Marie had her gorgeous daughters Finley and Harper with her, who made everyone laugh. She also opened up her home to them at Graceland and made them both feel welcome. Quote, she was so gracious to us, Austin, Baz and guests. If you haven't heard her music, please go and listen. She has a sultry voice, a power and tenderness that I have always loved. Tom and Rita also sent condolences to Lisa Marie's family and said, a mother should never have to lose a child. Lisa Marie lost her precious son, Benjamin. Priscilla loses her only daughter. It's too much. Nicholas Cage, Lisa Marie's ex-husband, then put out his own tribute to honor her life. In a statement to The Hollywood Reporter, he said, she had the greatest laugh of anyone I've ever met. She lit up every room and I am heartbroken. I find some solace in believing that she is reunited with her son, Benjamin. So as tragic as her passing was, it's good to see that Lisa Marie has been laid to rest amongst her family members ahead of her public memorial service. According to a bombshell report from TMZ, around the time of her tragic passing, Lisa Marie had begun using narcotics and lost a massive amount of weight all to prepare for award season to celebrate the success of Elvis. The late singer had allegedly gotten plastic surgery as well as also started taking weight loss pills. Sources told the outlet that she lost between 40 to 50 pounds in a month and a half leading up to the Golden Globe Awards. As we know, the ceremony was on January the 10th and that was her final public appearance. Entertainment reporter Billy Bush interviewed Lisa Marie at the Golden Globe's red carpet. She was there to support Austin Butler for his nomination for Best Actor in a Drama for his portrayal of her late father Elvis Presley. In her last interview, Billy Bush explained that the singer was looking gaunt and was unsteady on her feet. He said, she was very uneven in her balance. The speech was very slow. And definitely when the interview was over, I turned to my producer next to me and said, something's off here. A new TMZ documentary investigating the events leading up to the death of Lisa Marie Presley was just released yesterday. And it helps us get a clearer picture of her struggles at the time. Dr. Drew Pensky appears in the documentary and gives us his expert opinion on the warning signs displayed in her last interview. He said that she was slow her speech, she had drooping eyelids and was unsteady on her feet. That's not normal for a woman who is otherwise healthy at her age. The behavior at the Golden Globes was consistent with someone on a lot of substance. I wish that someone had raised the alarm though based on how she was looking. On the morning she passed, she reportedly complained of abdominal pain, but the cause of death has been deferred due to pending toxicology reports, which may take several months. On that tragic day, her housekeeper discovered her unresponsive in her bedroom. An ex-husband, Danny Keogh, performed CPR. She was then transported to a local hospital in LA. She reportedly suffered a full cardiac arrest and remained in the ICU in an induced coma and in critical condition.
condition leading up to her death. According to the report, sources said that Lisa Marie was pronounced brain dead upon being admitted to the hospital. The family members signed a do not resuscitate order in case she flatlined again. Though sadly, she did flatline again, suffered a second cardiac arrest and was pronounced dead not long after that. Now that is an absolutely tragic set of events. Since her passing, there have been several bombshell revelations that have come out about Lisa Marie Presley. The documentary also touches on her financial troubles and alleges that she took up to three life insurance policies out before her death. As a result, she reportedly left around $35 million to be split between her three kids, 14-year-old twins Harper and Finley, and her eldest daughter, 33-year-old Riley. TMZ producer Katie Hayes stated that Lisa was never disciplined about money. Quote, she was a big spender and she made some bad investments. She basically blew through $100 million in 25 years. The report alleges that at the time of her death, she was $4 million in debt, which includes the $2.5 million that she still owed to the IRS. This is likely related to her 2018 lawsuit against her former manager Barry Siegel when she accused him of negligence and mishandling her sizable inheritance that she got from her father. According to documents filed at the time, Lisa Marie claimed that he left her in financial ruin and he put his own interests ahead of her own and mismanaged her finances. That resulted in her $100 million trust dwindling to $14,000 in cash by 2016. Meanwhile, Barry claimed that her financial problems were due to her own missteps and he then countersued her for $800,000 in unpaid bills. But the lawsuit ended up dragging on for years. The documentary also included some truly shocking facts about Lisa Marie and it offered a very raw and realistic look at the life of Elvis and Priscilla's only child. Number 10, Unsteady on Her Feet. Entertainment reporter Billy Bush interviewed Lisa Marie at the 2023 Golden Globes red carpet. And as we know, the ceremony on January the 10th was her last public appearance. She was there to support Austin Butler for his nomination for Best Actor in a Drama for his portrayal of her late father, Elvis Presley. The interview has since gone viral as many people have pointed to it as a warning sign that Lisa Marie was not herself in the days leading up to her passing. She spoke to Billy Bush alongside her dad's longtime friend, Jerry Schilling, and at one point said, I'm gonna grab your arm. Then she held on to him for support. Billy has since spoken out about that moment and said he is saddened over having done one of her final appearances before she died only two days later. He said, it feels awful. I feel my heart is very heavy for pretty much anyone in pain. He also spoke about her mannerisms and said that he noticed throughout the interview that she was very uneven in her balance and her speech was very slow. Billy said, when the interview was over, I turned to my producer next to me and said, something's off here. Number nine, slurring her speech. A new TMZ documentary investigating the events leading up to the death of Lisa Marie Presley was just released yesterday and it helps us get a clearer picture of her struggles at the time. When she attended the Golden Globes just two days before her death, she was visibly frail. Dr. Drew appears in the documentary and gives us his expert opinion on the warning signs displayed in Lisa Marie's last interview. He said that she was slurring her speech, she had drooping eyelids and was unsteady on her feet. Quote, that's not normal for a woman who is otherwise healthy at her age. The behavior at the Golden Globes was consistent with somebody on a lot of substance. At this point, a TMZ producer then says, we have information that may explain why her heart suddenly stopped beating. To which Dr. Drew says, the fact that she gets up and goes to the Golden Globes, good for her. I wish that someone had raised the alarm though, based on how she was looking. Dr. Dave Montgomery, a board certified cardiologist and host of The Good Doctor, also gave his take on the interview. He explained on Good Morning America that many aspects can lead to someone having cardiac issues. He said that especially in women, incidences of heart attacks and heart failure for those ages 35 to 54 are going up. Number eight, stomach pain. On the morning she passed, Lisa Marie reportedly complained of abdominal pain that continued to intensify. But the cause of death has been deferred due to pending toxicology results, which might still take several months. On that tragic day, her housekeeper discovered her unresponsive in her bedroom and her ex-husband Danny Keo performed CPR. She was then transported to a local hospital in LA after getting at least one epinephrine shot, which restored her pulse. She'd reportedly suffered a full cardiac arrest and remained in the ICU in an induced coma and in critical condition leading up to her passing. According to the report, once she was in the hospital, Lisa Marie suffered a second cardiac arrest and was pronounced dead not long after that. While cardiac arrest seems to come on suddenly, there are usually warning signs that are often ignored. The most common are chest and stomach pain, breathlessness, palpitations, lightheadedness or fainting, nausea and vomiting. In fact, researchers have found that of more than 800 people who've experienced sudden cardiac arrest, about half of them had warning signs during the month leading up to the arrest and even 24 hours before. Of those who survived, 32% recognized the signs early and called the ambulance, while just 6% of those who didn't get help ended up surviving. Number seven, struggling.
struggling with stairs. On TikTok, yet another video was posted from the Golden Globes, which shows Lisa Marie was clearly struggling to descend a series of stairs at the ceremony, despite the fact that she got help from Austin Butler and Jerry Schilling. Reporter Billy Bush opened up about that moment. For his red carpet interviews, celebrities had to navigate two steps to the platform where he was standing, but Lisa Marie was having a lot of difficulty doing just that. Billy said, it was clear that she was not coming up the two flights. I went down and met her on the carpet itself. I can tell you this, we had two steps up onto our platform and I asked her, here, let me lend you a hand to come up. He explained that she was clinging onto the arm of Jerry Schilling and very much relying on his support for balance. He went on to say she was cognizant. She was certainly with it just a second slow, but she was there. She was definitely there, but just a tad off in some way. The host again expressed his sadness at her sudden passing and said that he would never have guessed something like this could happen, even though he did notice that Lisa Marie did not seem to be in the best place on that red carpet. Number six, mixing medication. The new documentary also dives into Lisa Marie's well-documented struggles with substance misuse. The outlet alleges that around the time of her passing, the singer had began using painkillers in combination with weight loss pills. She first spoke out about her dependency on such medications in the foreword for Harry Nelson's book titled Prescription for Liberating a Nation in Pain. It was there that she wrote about the fact that she saw both her father and her ex-husband Michael Jackson die of complications from substance misuse. She started out the passage writing, as you may read this and wonder how, after losing people close to me, I also fell prey. I was recovering after the birth of my daughters Vivian and Finley. When a doctor prescribed me medication for pain, it only took a short-term prescription in the hospital for me to feel the need to keep taking them due to the dangerous properties. She went on to describe the difficult path to overcoming dependence and putting her life back together. Through her writing, we find out just how much substance issues have affected her life and how many loved ones she's lost to the epidemic. Number five, rapid weight loss. According to the bombshell report from TMZ, we know that Lisa Marie lost a massive amount of weight in an effort to prepare for awards season and celebrate the success of the Elvis biopic. She had allegedly gotten plastic surgery as well and also started taking weight loss pills. Sources told the outlet that she lost between 40 to 50 pounds in the month and a half leading up to the Golden Globe Awards. She was said to have undergone an extreme weight loss regimen ahead of the ceremony on January the 10th, which she attended with her mother Priscilla. Of course, that's a very short amount of time to be losing that much weight. It's unclear whether or not it was a result of the surgery or the weight loss pills. But either way, it's incredibly upsetting to think that she felt like she had to change something about herself just to prepare for the appearance at the Golden Globes. If anything, it just goes to show you how much pressure is on celebrities, and especially women, to maintain a certain image when they're living their lives in the spotlight. It was a happy night for the Presleys though, as Austin Butler ended up winning the Golden Globe for his portrayal of Elvis. And he took the time to thank both Lisa Marie and Priscilla in his acceptance speech. Number four, life insurance policies. The documentary also touches on Lisa Marie's financial troubles and alleges that she took up to three life insurance policies out before her death. The singer was said to be millions of dollars in debt at the end of her life. She allegedly cashed out two life insurance policies and intended to take out a third, all to pay off her $4 million debt. She took out one for $25 million and another one for $10 million, with family sources telling TMZ that a third one might have been valued at $10 million. Lisa Marie reportedly filled out paperwork to receive a lump sum of $2 million, but the policy was never cashed in because of a paperwork screw up. As a result, she apparently left $35 million to be split between her three kids, 14-year-old twins Harper and Finley, and her eldest daughter, 33-year-old Riley. In the documentary, producer Katie Hayes states that Lisa was never disciplined about money. Quote, she was a big spender and she made some bad investments. She basically blew through $100 million in 25 years, which was her inheritance that she received from her father, Elvis. It's been reported that all of those millions dwindled down to just $14,000 by 2016. Number three, Priscilla contesting her will. Damn and court documents have pit Priscilla Presley against her granddaughter, Riley, claiming that she was pushed out as a trustee and an inconsistent signature from her daughter, Lisa Marie, was used. She's now filed legal documents to set aside an amendment to Lisa Marie's trust, which eliminates her and her daughter's former business manager, Barry Siegel, as trustees and replaces them with her granddaughter, Riley. Now, Priscilla is hoping to make this amendment invalid. In the court filing, she claims that she and Barry were first named co-trustees on January the 29th in 1993. But when Lisa Marie passed on January the 12th this year, she found a new amendment, one that was dated to the 11th of March in 2016. Priscilla claims that that amendment, allegedly signed by Priscilla, misspells her actual name and contains a signature that appears inconsistent with her usual one. So she's bringing up the possibility of signature fraud. Priscilla also maintains that the amendment was never delivered to her during her daughter's lifetime, which is something that was required by the express 
terms of the trust. She also says that the document was never witnessed or notarized and that the date on the document is suspicious. Number two, ongoing custody battle. According to the documentary, there's now a family fight brewing over the custody of Lisa Marie's two tween kids, Harper and Finley. According to the report, their father, Michael Lockwood, will almost certainly get full custody of the twins. However, Danny Keogh, the father of her first two children, was living with the family at the time of her death and he was also very close to the girls. So there might be an issue when it comes to custody. TMZ reporter has claimed that there is a lot of bad blood between Danny and Michael. To give you some background, Lisa Marie was married to Danny from 1988 to 1994 and to Michael from 2006 to 2021. She first filed from divorce from him in June of 2016 and ever since their separation, they've been embroiled in a bitter custody battle over their children. During the proceedings, the singer claimed that she was $16 million in debt, with most of that stemming from unpaid taxes. Michael eventually asked her to pay him $263,000 a year so that he could enjoy a lifestyle that is closer to his marital status of living. He also wanted $40,000 a month in child support. They did have a prenup, but Michael later claimed that he was badly advised by his lawyers. The case was initially settled in 2018 in her favor, but in 2021, Michael went back to court demanding child support. And coming in at number one, a strained relationship with her mother. Lisa Marie reportedly had a fraught relationship with her mother Priscilla, going all the way back to her teen years. At the time, Priscilla was involved with the Church of Scientology, which is another factor that might have caused a riff in their relationship in Lisa's early years. The documentary featured an appearance from former Scientologist Karen Della Carrier, who said that she remembers strained feelings between the two of them. She recalled a moment when she saw them together many years ago and said, Lisa had a long face, miserable, stepped out of the limousine, and I heard Priscilla say, handle her. Lisa Marie also spoke out about her upbringing and all the times she would clash with her mother. In a 2013 appearance on the talk, she said, my mom was really, really strict with me, constrictive. I realized that is not going to work very well because it made us not get close for a very long time. We are now very close, but when I was younger, it was difficult to have a relationship with somebody that's got you around the neck all the time. But even though their relationship might have been strained at some point, we'll never really know the entire story. Thank <laughs> you.